Hey, what's up? This is Nick with Ultimate Motorcycling, and today I just got done riding something really exciting. This is the 2022 Ducati Multistrada V4 Pikes Peak. Now, you guys know what this is. Ducati is celebrating their involvement and all of their winnings at the legendary Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Now, this actually dates back, and uh, their involvement dates back, rather, back to 2008, which originally started with privateer effort on a hyper motard you know back then it was still the air-cooled hyper and they went up on the uh you know mixed conditions pike peak because back then it was a an a half off-road and half paved uh, course and then as the years went on they brought in some other names into the into the mix and uh you know continued winning here and there and just like uh Pikes Peak's involvement with motorcycles, which was an on and off relationship. Ducati also, you know, uh, jumped in and out of the Pikes Peak game, but importantly, the multi is what really sort of solidified their, their uh, status at the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, uh, specifically the Multistrada 1200, with, you know, their, their involvement at, at that race, you know, the race to the clouds, as we, as we should say. And particularly men like uh, Greg Tracy, uh, Alexander Smith, and of course the late great uh, Carlin Dunn, who uh, happened to claim quite a few titles on the mountain, uh, you know, doing so, of course, on the multi. And this latest edition of the Pikes Peak celebrates those, those achievements. Now, as you guys know, this is a Multistrada V4 done up in a little bit more street bias um, fixings, we shall say. So going back to last year when the original Multistrada V4 came out, it was a little bit more ADV focused and Ducati had an eye on taking to the trail probably a little bit more aggressively than prior generations of the Multi. Now, because of that, it used a 19 inch front wheel and a, a 17 inch rear. And despite the fact that I found the Multi Strata V4 to be a very good handling motorcycle on the street and quite competent in an off-road capacity, well, you can't really beat a 17 inch front wheel when you're talking about riding quick on the street. So that is exactly what they've done with this Pikes Peak. Now, I'm here in Palm Springs, California, which is typically a beautiful spot in sunny Southern California. So we're gonna get into this first ride review and I want you guys to stick around. Okay, so first things first, what are the differences between your Multistrada V4, the ADV model with the 19 inch uh, front wheel and 17 inch rear, and this motorcycle here before you, which is a incredibly sporty uh, version of that motorcycle. Now the most obvious change is with the 17 inch front wheel up front and it still has a 17 inch wheel in the rear. Now you do get a fatter front tire with the Pirelli Diablo Rosso 4. It's a much grippier compounds than any of the more ADV related uh, rubber that you might find on the, the other bike. And um, you know in the rear they've also gone with a 190-55 profile just to kind of give it a taller profile, a little bit more edge grip, which is complementary to what this bike is supposed to do. And what this bike does well is handle. Now, due to that and, you know, with the sort of uh, Pikes Peak image in your minds, which is sportier riding, you know, they've done some other crucial changes to this motorcycle. They've actually introduced a new front frame element. And as you guys know, the V4 engine that you see before you is a stressed member in this chassis. And what they've done really to encourage stability, which I think comes through in spades on this bike, because it is a very stable planted motorcycle with excellent front end feel when you're piling on the brakes and some twisty bits when we actually got some dry road ahead of us. Now what that front frame does is change the rake and trail numbers a little bit. So they've actually kicked out the trail just a hair and and, and uh, kicked out the rake a little bit, again, for stability. Now in the rear, we have the beautiful, iconic Ducati single-sided swing arm. It is now 10 mil longer. Of course, when you compare this to the ADV bike, you're talking about a bike that has a, wheel, a wheelbase that is 1.0 inches longer. Again, going back to that keyword of stability that I've already mentioned. Another really key component that I wanna talk about is just what that does to the handling. Of course, now you have a little bit more weight over the front ends because you've gone to that 17 inch front. You're able to just put a little bit more weight over the front end when you're braking and things of that nature. And it just makes it a much more sport touring oriented machine. 
And now one of the big benefits in terms of handling that they've done with this bike is giving it lightweight wheels. So we we're talking about Marcassini Forge aluminum wheels that save a whopping 8.8 .8 pounds of unsprung weight. The other big benefit that uh, you have going for you is a counter rotating crankshaft derived from MotoGP, which helps fight those pesky gyroscopic forces that the wheels impose on a motorcycle and hamper its handling, handling abilities. And then the other really trick thing for this Ducati flagship motorcycle is, uh, you know, you have the, the active radar and the rear, the front facing radar and the rear facing radar. And it's really cool with the adaptive cruise control and uh, warning signaling up here. So you can set the cruise control uh, and just set distance and, you know, do its thing and it'll, it'll keep distance from a car as you see fit. Um, you know, the other fundamental change that we got going on is with the uh, riding position. Of course, uh, you know, because it's not an ADV bike, it, you know, you no longer need to stand in the saddle. They've gone ahead and changed the handlebars. They are now 15 millimeter lower and they've reduced the sweep by about nine mil. So they've made the bar much straighter. They've also narrowed it by 18 mil. Again, just you don't need as much leverage in a street capacity. The other really crucial thing, and to gain ground clearance, was raise up those foot pegs a little bit. So those are 10 mil up and 10 mil back. Again, it kind of cants you in a very comfortable but aggressive riding position. And then you have this nice plushy seat. So overall, I just think that, uh, you know, they've done a really fine job with the riding position here. So as far as the technical details and the nitty gritty, let's dive into that right here. You know, I'm kind of saving the best for last a little bit with the 1158 Gran Turismo motor. Now the core changes between this and what is found in the Panigale or the Street Fighter, as you guys already know, and it is well established and documented, is the fact that one, this is an 1158 versus an 1103 cc. It makes a claimed 170 horsepower, 90 foot to 92 foot pounds of torque, which is quite ample on the street. You have all that low end, mid range, and top end power that you could ever ask for, and it really translates well. It's a very smooth yet, um, you know, there's still some tactile feel to this engine. It's alive. You know, it's got that uh, Ducati performance aspect to it, um, and that's something that I think you know comes through nicely. And uh, of course, the other thing is that it uses a spring and bucket valve train instead of the Desmo CD, or uh, Desmo Dromic valve train. Now, what that does is give you a whopping 36,000 mile service interval, which is pretty much unheard of in the sport touring class. And uh, that's pretty impressive. No way to shake or bake it. But overall, I think this engine is a bit of a peach. And when you're talking about these flagship models, well, they need to have a lot of character and a lot of personality and a lot of punch. And that's exactly what you get with this motor. Now, they've done a couple other really important tweaks to the overall electronics package. Of course, you do have the brand new race mode derived from the Panigale and Street Fighter. And accompanying that, you have a sport mode, a tour touring mode and an urban mode. Now, all of those things fundamentally change the ride quality of this motorcycle. And with that, you also have the Olin's semi-active suspension uh, that uses the smart EC 2.0 system. So it's adjusting damping rates as you're going down the road. And you know, just, you can go ahead and stiffen things up, soften things up as you see fit independently. Now, for my money, I really enjoyed the sportiness and direct connection of the sport mode, which they have updated in when you're in the high power engine mode uh, specifically, just giving it a little bit more direct response. The other kind of electronic tweaks that they've done this year for the Pikes Peak Edition, and because it's a more uh, sport-minded motorcycle, um, they've, change the uh, rev limit strategy so it actually tapers off as you get near the top kind of signaling that you're you're about to start banging off the rev limiter uh, they've also updated the kill times on the uh, up and down quick shifter generally speaking the up down quick shifter works well however when riding at low to mid rpm and transitioning from first to second to third gears it can be a little jumpy at times when you start switching from fourth to fifth to six it's actually smooth as silk and they've also raised the over of protection when you're banging down the gearbox on the racetrack. We didn't get to do that today, but <clears throat> pretty cool. As usual with any flagship Ducati, we have a full suite of IMU supported electronics. That means corner and ABS, lean angle sensitive traction control, and the updated wheelie control strategies. Now in practice, the 
safety package here is incredible. In bad weather, you can really trust those systems to get you home safely. And in the dry conditions, you can push on with more confidence and ride at faster paces. But really, what really really stands out to me is just this suspension, how well tuned it is for street riding. It keeps the bike balanced, composed, whether you're on the brakes or on the gas, and you can tailor it to your needs. And again, if you don't even adjust anything, uh, you know, for, for your own specific purposes, you can just use the preset riding modes and they, you know, put things in a nice direction for you. And then of course you have these really heavy duty uh, Brembo Stylema calipers with 330, 330 millimeter rotors. The important thing that they've changed for this year, if you guys like that type of kit, which you probably do, is that they've updated the brake pad compound to the same as the Panigale. It's actually just given a little bit more bite, a little bit more aggression in the braking system. Again, for that sport riding motif. If you guys have any questions about the 2022 Ducati Multistrada V4 Pikes Peak, go ahead and drop them down below and we'll get you some answers. And the last thing I wanna remind you guys is go ahead and uh, take care out there. Now be safe.